Today I'm going to be giving you guys the best settings for the Modern Warfare 2 beta on PC to make sure we're maximizing our FPS whilst maintaining solid visibility in our games. So let's jump into the graphic settings and start off in the display area with display mode. Full screen borderless is what I've got it set to at the moment, but you actually want to set this to full screen. I'm only using full screen borderless because I'm doing recording and I do some content creation, but for any of you guys who are actually just trying to maximize your performance, full screen mode is the best because it dedicates all of the resource to the game whilst you've got it maximized, which is what we want. Next up, we've got this new option called Constrain Mouse to Game Window. This isn't going to matter for you guys playing on full screen, so just leave this just as default and leave it as is. For display monitor, this is just saying which monitor it's coming out on. You can use this to change which monitor the game is showing up on. For me, it's going through my capture card. For you guys, you'll know it's on the correct monitor because it will be in front of you. Pretty simple. Display adapter, set this to your GPU. Most of you guys will only have one option here. However, if you happen to have an integrated GPU in your CPU, uh, like some of the older cards did, and you've also got your dedicated NVIDIA or AMD GPU, then you need to make sure you're choosing your dedicated GPU here, otherwise you'll lack performance. For screen refresh rate, mine is locked because I'm running at full screen boardless, but for you guys running at full screen, which I recommended for you to do, you need to make sure that this screen refresh rate is set at the refresh rate of your monitor, i.e. for me, it's 240 hertz. If you're running a 144 hertz monitor, you need to make sure it's set here, otherwise the game's gonna feel horrendous when you start playing. Display resolution, just set this to native resolution. Don't play around with that here. Uh, for me, that's 1080p. For you guys, it might be 1440p. Just ensure it's set here. Should be done by default. Dynamic resolution, we're going to keep this off. Aspect ratio, set this to automatic unless you want to start messing around with different aspect ratios. Uh, for most people, 16 by 9 is what automatic is going to choose because that's what most monitors are. But automatic sorts this out for you, no problem. V-Sync, gameplay, and menus, leave these both are off. What this does is it limits your frame rate to match your monitor's refresh rate. It can prevent screen tearing, uh, especially if you're playing at very low refresh rates, like 60 hertz. Uh, but for any of us playing 144 or 240 hertz, it's really not a problem. And turning this on will cause a lot of input latency, which we do not like. So keep these off. Custom frame rate limit. A lot of people will buy default go to this and say oh, i'm going to put it to unlimited but this actually isn't that good an option instead leave it a custom click show more and then for gameplay custom frame rate limit max that out that's going to be your frame rate limit when you're in game and you actually need the fps menu custom frame rate limit i put this at 100 uh, this makes the menu still feel smooth when i'm actually moving my mouse around and uh, going through my classes going through my loadouts and stuff but it's not using up loads of system resource and getting my fans ramped up when i'm just sat in the menu uh, which is nice and i'd recommend that you guys do that and then for out of focus gameplay uh, or frame rate limit you can just leave this at 30 because that way when you've literally alt tabbed out the game and you're doing something else the game is using very little resource and uh, not making your whole system run slow so i'd recommend you go for this over the unlimited frame rate uh, restart shaders optimization for a lot of cod games since modern warfare 2019 this has been a really good way to resolve a lot of issues if you have any stuttering just weird issues come in here restart your shaders and um, it will just reinstall them over time and it'll make everything run fine display gamma leave this at 2.2 if you're on a monitor if you're on a tv set it to 2.4 brightness i'd recommend that you turn this up from the default 50 uh, ignore the not visible barely visible easily visible thing i've always recommended that you do this the game looks a lot brighter a lot more um, visibility maximization happens when you have this set to just above that default 50 to something like 55. Focused mode, this is a setting they added in Vanguard where if you turn this on, it basically puts a black overlay over your second monitor. I'd recommend you don't do that. That's probably gonna use up some level of system resource to be doing that and it's just, it has no point, so just leave it to off. And then high dynamic range, even if you have a HDR monitor, I'd recommend that you keep this off. HDR typically doesn't really help with visibility in multiplayer. It's something which looks nice for single player. So maybe when the campaign rolls around in the full release, we might want to put this on if you've got a HDR monitor. But for most of us, just leave it off. Next, moving into quality, click apply, obviously, when we click over here. Uh, quality presets, just leave this at uh, recommended or whatever it is. When we go in and start messing around with this, it's all going to change anyway, so don't worry about it. Render resolution, just leave this at 100 percent that way you're using up or you're using the exact same render resolution that was set on the previous screen we're not downscaling or upscaling if at the end of all of these settings you're still having problems running the game you can come in here and turn this down a little bit and you might gain some fps but i'd recommend in most circumstances that you don't do that then you've got a bunch of different amd and nvidia technologies which you can choose from but i'd recommend that you just turn on fidelity fx cas that is contrast adaptive sharpening then click show more and i like to set this to around 75 
percent or 75 as the value this is a really nice sharpening filter that uses little to no resource to actually run and it makes the game look incredible some people might like to turn this higher than 75 some people might like to put it lower do a bit of trial and error and see what works for you but definitely turn it on anti-aliasing we are back to the day and age where we um don't have anything lower than smaat2x so uh warzone you could go down to no anti-aliasing or um smaa2x but now we've only got temporal or the t part the out of the anti thing, which is a bit blurry, but because we've got the Fidelity FX sharpening, it doesn't matter too much. I just recommend that you turn this to SMAA T2X, remove the filmic part. The filmic part adds a bit of a blur, which we don't really like. So we wanna just remove that, run the T2X. Nearby level of detail, keep this to high. Um, any of these level of detail options, they use very little system resource and they really improve how objects look, improve that visibility overall. Texture resolution. I'd recommend most people try and keep this at normal. This is all going to come down to how much VRAM does your GPU use. You'll see uh, this bar in the bottom right corner. Uh, as I go from very low to uh, high, the difference in the usage of VRAM is massive. This isn't really going to be an FPS hog if you've just got a semi-decent GPU. Now, if you've got a GPU with at least 8 gigs of VRAM, which a lot of people do these days, running this at normal is fine. High, I wouldn't recommend because it doesn't really improve the look of it that much at all. Um, but having it at normal instead of low and very low improves visibility, improves that fidelity of the game overall, and you know, makes us feel like we're playing a game that's been released in 2022 rather than 2010. So keep that at normal. Texture filter, anisotropic, and particle quality. These are both settings we want to keep on high. They uh, improve our overall visibility. Particle quality has actually been known to improve FPS in a bunch of the previous COD titles. Not confirmed whether it does that in this game, but I'm going to go off the idea that it's a similar engine. It probably still does, and it doesn't affect FPS at all, really. Uh, texture and filter anisotropic just really improves how surfaces look when you're looking at it from a slightly different angle to straight on. Makes the whole game look better, better visibility. Settings we want to definitely keep on high. Bullet impact and sprays. Just keep these on or off. It's literally personal preference. No effect really on uh, your FPS and no effect on visibility. It's just, you know, keeping them on makes the game feel a little more realistic, give you that immersion. So I like keeping them on. Shader quality, put this too low. You don't really gain any benefits from having this above low. Uh, this is all to do with lighting on surfaces. If anything, I found that the visibility is improved by turning this down a bit. So I put it to low. Tessellation off uh it's a setting for uh glitz and glam basically it's not something we want for uh improved visibility or improved fps so turn that off on demand texture streaming is where it will download high quality textures while you play that's a big no i've always recommended that you keep this off so make sure that's off and then all of the settings below it will all be locked anyway and then streaming quality we want to put that to low as well then we get into shadow and lighting we're going to bash through these Shadow map resolution, I put this to low, not very low. Very low looks horrendous, low looks fine. You actually don't get much better shadows until you hit something like extra or maybe high, but they end up using a lot of system resource. So I've always recommended that you keep these on low. I recommended the same in Vanguard as well. Spot shadow quality, put this to low as well, has a really high uh, VRAM usage when you start pumping this up. So I'd recommend that you keep this low. Cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows. As long as you're running with probably 8 gig of RAM, maybe 16 gig of RAM or more, I'd recommend that you keep these on because it will allow uh, some of those shadows to be stored in a cache using your RAM and it makes them run far more efficiently on any systems that can do it. Uh, it's a bit of a trial and error thing. If you turn these on and you're having some serious problems and you're running on an older build, you could try turning these off and see if it helps your FPS, but in general, I find that keeping these on is a good thing. Particle lighting, just leave this at normal. I haven't seen it had much effect really, so I just haven't touched it. Ambient occlusion and SSR both are additional nice things that you can have on, but they don't help with FPS or visibility. So keep these off. And then into post-processing effects. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This is gonna be an interesting one. This is all gonna come down to whether you have a CPU bound or a GPU bound system, i.e. do you have a really strong GPU, but a kind of weak CPU, then, then you're CPU bound. Whereas if you have it the opposite way around where your CPU is actually really strong, your GPU might even be a bit weaker or kind of around the same, then you're more GPU bound. If you're in a CPU bound scenario, um, you can put this to on plus boost, 
right? So if you have a really strong GPU and a kind of weak CPU, on plus boost is better. However, if you've got kind of even, uh, which for me is true, I've got a 12700K, really strong CPU and a strong GPU of 3070, I actually get better performance running this at on. And a lot of people will just see on plus boost, they just go for that, but you have to actually assess this. So try both these out and see which one works better for you. For me, on works better. The next three, depth of field, world motion blur and weapon motion blur, all of these off because they are all just fancy stuff that kind of look horrible and make the game vision terrible. And then film grain as well. We can just shove that to zero in a similar way. Really affects your visibility. Tries to make the game look cinematic. We don't want any of that. Finally, let's head into view. So field of view, I'd recommend that you just max this out. This can have an effect on frame rate because you're actually showing more on the screen at any one time. But the improvement that you get in terms of the vision, you know, we've got FOV on console now as well. Hallelujah for all your console players. Um, but for us on PC, we've had this for ages. You need to be trying to max this out or at least hitting maybe 110 to be keeping up with everyone else who's running with those high field of views. So I'd recommend you max that out. ADS field of view, keep this to affected. This uh, makes it so that that higher FOV that we've put on here is now used when we do our ADSing with any low magnification sites or just iron sites when we ADS and that makes it so that there's less visual recoil overall which is massively helpful in this game because the visual recoil is already pretty crazy so make sure we keep that on and then everything else down here I've kept a default we've got this new setting called weapon field of view I'm going to be testing this one out might even do a video on it comparing these three settings uh, it basically changes how much screen space is taken by the weapon. I've known some people from the console beta decided they wanted to put this on narrow because, or sorry, wide, because it makes the weapon take up less space on your screen. But I've just left it a default because I like the game looking kind of how it's meant to look. I find that the wide setting looks a bit weird. So uh, yeah, I've left this at default. And anyway, guys, that is all of the graphical settings that we want for the Modern Warfare 2 beta. This will maximize your FPS, maximize that visibility overall, and give you the best gameplay experience possible. If you found this video informative and want to see more uh, videos surrounding the Modern Warfare 2 beta and the full release when it comes out, then please do subscribe down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let's get the conversation going, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.